Hello, if you're looking for practical information on Copangan, the best beaches on the island and where to stay, this video is for you. So what I'd like to do is take you on a tour around this map and show you what the landscape looks like. Then we can talk about the island itself, where to stay and what to expect. <laughs> Disclaimer, one thing you need to know is that I'm here during COVID lockdown and the beaches are pretty much empty, no tourists on the island. So I don't know how popular and crowded the beaches get during normal tourist season. We're starting our tour of the island here on Malibu beach. I read online that Malibu beach is one of the most beautiful places on the island. So I booked my room nearby. I do find the beach to be very photogenic, but you need to know that there's many sand flies. Being bit by a sand fly is way worse than being bit by a mosquito. Shoo! Also, the beach is very shallow at both high and low tides. There are stones, a few sea urchins and sea cucumbers on the west side of the beach. Malibu's trademark are these rounded shaped trees. By the way, every single beach you're going to see has bungalows or hotel property right on the sand. So if you see a beach you like, you can look at staying right on the water. The sun rises on this side of the island and the best sunsets happen on this side of the island. Just letting you know in case you want to find a hotel room or a bungalow that faces sunrise or romantic sunset. Next on our map is Chaloklam. Chaloklam is a small fishing village. There are only a couple of streets, a pier and a few restaurants on the water. There is a Sunday market every Sunday afternoon. Jaloklam's beach is slightly better for swimming than Malibu beach, especially if you go down the right side of the pier. The water is deeper and the sand is white and soft. A tip if you decide to stay around Jaloklam, my favorite restaurant is Indy Kitchen. It's a family-owned place. The kids run around while the parents cook. I love their food and flavors. The advantage about staying around Chaloklam is that it's very quiet here. There's lots of street food and lots of little restaurants. It's also cheaper than other places around the island. The disadvantage, the beach gets very shallow at low tide and is not the best for swimming. There are a lot of boats parked on the beach, but you swim between them. At the pier here, you can catch a speedboat taxi and get dropped off at some of the beaches that are not easily accessible. Continuing on, the road gets hilly. There's not much of a beach down here, up until you get to Coral Bay. Coral Beach is a tucked away little beach. It has a bohemian vibe. You feel cut off the rest of the world. So if you're coming to Copangan on a honeymoon, this may be a great place to relax and unwind. The beach is very pretty and has soft sand. On the negative side, I saw a few sand flies and there's lots of mosquitoes in the bushes. The bay is shallow and quiet. It's not ideal for swimming at low tide. You can snorkel here on the far left side of the beach. Coming up next on our map is a very short hike to a viewpoint. The hike starts at the entrance of the Tan Salet National Park. Follow the rope up in the forest. It'll take you 10-15 minutes to climb up the hill. There is an opening here and you can see the bay below. It's not an amazing viewpoint, but if you're in a neighborhood, stop by. If you're looking to shoot some drone footage, this is a great platform to fly from. At the entrance of Tan Sadet National Park is also where the trek to Bottle Beach starts. Trekking to Bottle Beach will take you anywhere between one to two hours. The walk is about four kilometers or two and a half miles. If you don't want to walk there and back, you can jump on a speedboat taxi. Bottle Beach is said to be one of the most beautiful beaches on the island. Being also very isolated, not many people hang out there. If you're looking for a romantic holiday, you can consider renting a bungalow on Bottle Beach and enjoy the remoteness. There are no other roads up here, so to reach the beaches on the east side of the islands, we're going to take the main road to town, Tongsala. It's a beautiful paved drive with tall coconut trees. The road here is good and mostly flat. It's not the case in other parts of the island. I'll point out when we get there. To be fair, 80% of the roads on Kopangan are paved and easy to drive on. Tongsala is the biggest village on the island. This is where you arrive by ferry and the only place with a supermarket. There are also lots of restaurants, hotels and bars in town. The best part about Tongsala is the Saturday night market. I've been to so many markets around Thailand, but for some reason I really enjoyed the atmosphere of the Tongsala Saturday night market. Lots of food is being prepared in front of you. Lots of fresh fruits and veggies are on sale directly from someone's garden. And you can find clothes and souvenirs. Tongsala has several small beaches around the pier. As soon as you get out of town, you hit long stretches of beach along Bang Chiru and Bang Tai Bays. The water is very shallow and perfect for kite surfing, especially if you're a beginner. You will find a few kite surfing schools around this area. 
If you follow the road up the Banantai village, you will find Wat Po and its herbal sauna. And the oldest young nut tree in all of Thailand. It's a gorgeous tree, you cannot miss it. It is said to be 400 years old. If you keep going past the old tree, the road becomes a bit more hilly, but it's still an easy paved drive. You will eventually come to this turn-off point towards Ban Phai Mai. Be aware that it will quickly turn into a dirt road, but keep going. And after 10 minutes or so, you will come to a trailhead for a hike up the most beautiful viewpoint on the entire island. There are several trails through the forest that you can follow. The path is groomed well enough, and there are blue arrows here and there to show you the way. But it's not always completely obvious. I know how the people have gone lost around here. The most tricky part is climbing the big boulders at the end of the trail. You need to remember that the way up is between the stones, not around them. There's a rope here. It will help you find your way up. The view is amazing from up here. So wild and beautiful. below is the famous Bottle Beach. We spend a good hour taking photos and looking at the bay. What you can do next is scooter down to Aotong Nine Pine Noi. It's a long stretch of beach that is absolutely fabulous. While the bay is shallow at low tide, it's still really good for swimming. The sand is soft. The atmosphere is nice here. You are definitely far away from the rest of the island. But there are many restaurants, little shops and small bars around. I love this beach, it's definitely one of my favorites. Next, you can take the road down to Aotong Nan Pai Yai. I'm probably killing all of these names in Thai, sorry people. Although the two beaches are close to each other, the atmosphere is completely different. The sand here is composed of small gravel. The bay is way more shallow and not good at swimming at low tide. There are also lots of boats parked here and what looks like cheaper accommodation options. You can continue down the hill. This is a really good road, all the way to Ha Tan Salet. The beach is part of the national park and there is a small entrance fee. This beach is a bit more bohemian. It's very small, surrounded by bungalows built on the cliffs. This beach has the deepest waters we found on the island and the water is slightly cooler than other places. Swimming here is super refreshing. Okay, if you come down the roads towards Ban Kai village to Ban Kai beach, you will find a long stretch of beach that is very shallow. It's a very photogenic spot, especially if you walk down the farthest end of the beach. You will see fishing boats standing in the sand at low tide. This is another great spot to learn kite surfing. Then the fun begins on the steep mountainous road of Fu Moon Beach. It's not an easy road, it goes up and down, so hold on! <laughs> you can see monkeys on the electric wires as you drive along. At the end of this mountain road, you will find the most perfect beach on the island, Hard Ring Beach, also known as Fu Moon Beach. Koh Phangan is famous for its full moon and half moon parties. Hundreds of backpackers come here to mingle, dance and get drunk. Parties aside, this is hands down one of the best beaches on the island. The sand is so soft. The water is crystal clear. It's a great place for swimming at both high tide and low tide. The beach is very long. There are lots of bars and restaurants around. It's fantastic. Again, I am on Kopangan during COVID lockdown and full moon beach is empty. Maybe this is why I love it so much. I cannot imagine what the beach looks like with thousands of tourists around. It will still be a fabulous place to swim and enjoy the soft white sand. From Fu Moon Beach, you can grab a taxi boat to Had Yuan. It's a hidden away beach, best reachable by boat. Although there's also a hiking path that can get you there, but we heard it's two hours through the forest, the heat and mosquitoes. There's also a road that goes to Had Yuan, but it's not recommended to drive or scooter there. It's a bit of dirt road with some really steep parts at the end. So take a boat ride. Had Yuan is as beautiful as Fu Moon Beach. White soft sand and crystal clear water. I absolutely love spending some time here. From Hatiwan, there's a short 15 to 20 minutes hike through big boulders and a forest to reach the hidden away Hatien. 
At the end of Hajiwan, there are stairs built on the rocks, a bohemian art store and a beach bar. You can follow the steps to the other side of the point, then go up into a little forest and go down the hill over the boulders to arrive at Hatian. Hatian has a whole new bohemian, hippie chic vibe. There are bungalows in the trees. I felt completely cut off the rest of the world. This is a hidden jewel of a beach. There is a floating platform in the middle of the beach with a hammock. The sand is soft and the water level is great for swimming. The restaurant right on the beach is super cute. The food is excellent. Try the peanut curry, it's delicious. There's one more hike here you can do to Hat Wai Nam. Back to Fu Moon Beach, you can get on a motorbike to the other side of the hill and Hat Sikatang or Lila Beach. This is a very shallow beach, not great for swimming. There is a really nice hotel right on the beach. This could be a cool place to stay if you want to be away from the Fu Moon party crowds, but still be near Fu Moon Beach. There's also a hike you can do here to a viewpoint. Google thinks it's a road to bike all the way up there, but don't believe Google Maps. You will have to walk. It's not a long hike, maybe 20 minutes uphill. You will get to giant rocks and an opening in the forest. You can see Koh Samui from here. Just be aware that the path is filled with mosquitoes. And they're monkeys. Lots of them. Two males got in a fight in front of us. They were bleeding. One was trying to hide behind us. Monkeys from the surrounding trees were also making their way around us to take part in the fights. It was a crazy scene. Maybe don't do this hike. The view is not worth getting bit by a monkey or the swarming mosquitoes. Just watch this video and call it done. Or go to the nearby Sky Moon Bar at the Sky Moon Resort. They have a beautiful terrace overlooking Full Moon Beach. Okay, last stretch of the island. Pass down, all this section of beach is very shallow. We're now making our way to Ao Hing Kong. It's a long beach with cool houses right on it. The water seems too shallow to swim here. It's supposed to be a great place for sunset. Coming up next is Trintanu Beach, a very long beach with beautiful soft sand. Dark clouds were gathering at the horizon when I got here. It made the beach even more beautiful and dramatic. There seems to be cheaper accommodation options on this beach. Up above is Hat Chao Pao Beach. This is a nice little beach. What's interesting here is that you can climb over the rocks following these wooden stairs and end up on the very artsy Zen Beach. It's a tiny beach where people meet to play instruments and dance. Going further up the map, we have Secret Beach, Hat Son. It's a very small beach. You have to go through the resort that is right on the water to access it. The sand here is soft and the water is very clear. It gets shallow at low tide, but it's okay for swimming. From here, we have the bigger Hat Yao. Yao means big. So it's a big beach with beautiful little restaurants right on the water. Seems very shallow at low tide. Next, Salad Beach. Another beautiful beach. Watching the sunset from here is like watching an aurora borealis. Salad Beach is located down a hill. The road to get there and get out is not that great. Mostly paved but very steep in some parts. So beware. And last but not least, Koma and Had Mai Had. This is one of my favorite beaches. The sand is composed of small gravel, so not as soft as other places. But it's a beautiful, very photogenic spot. Let me show you. fantastic place, right? And what a cool spot to watch the sunset. It's also a great snorkeling location, as long as it's not low tide, because the water can get super shallow. You can jump in the water right off the beach. I saw colorful fishes of all sizes, anemone and other corals. You can swim very close to some of the corals here, so please be careful not to touch them. Swim in the direction of the floating platform and Koma and you will find a beautiful, colorful world below. You have now seen pretty much the entire island. Are you tired guys? I have a few more tips for you. How to get around. 
The best way to get around the island is to hire a scooter. You will be asked for your passport as a security measure. I don't like somebody holding on to my passport at all, but it's common practice on the island. Very few places agree to hold a money deposit until we return the bike. Where to stay? If you're looking for budget accommodation, your best bet is to stay at Tongsala village. There are lots of cheap hotel options and street food. You'll also be close to everything as all the roads lead to Tongsala. You can also opt for staying near Chalo Clam. You will find budget accommodations here too and cheaper street food. If you're looking for a bohemian experience, then you should stay at Had Yuan or Had Tian. Lots of beautiful, sexy young people are staying around here and you will have a great yoga studio nearby. If you're looking for a beautiful, isolated, romantic beach, you should stay at Had Tan Sadet, Ao Tong Nai Pai Noi, Boro Beach, Coral Beach or Had Mai Had. If you're looking for snorkeling nearby, you should stay at Had Mai Had, Coral Beach or Had Yao West. If you're on a honeymoon, I would recommend Boro Beach, Hao Tong Nan Pai Noi, or had my head. If you'd like to party, Full Moon Beach is your best bet. Biggest parties on the island happen here. You will also be on the best beach of the entire island. This is probably my favorite number one beach. The downside is that it must be a very crowded place usually. And also the access here is not easy. The roads are very steep. It's not ideal to travel to and from Full Moon Beach. If my parents wanted to visit the island, I would book a hotel right on Had My Hat for them. It's probably not a cheap place, but it's right on the beach. They would have a great place to swim with everything they need nearby, plus gorgeous sunsets. Is Kopangan an island you should visit? The entire island is very bohemian. Lots of young, beautiful people around. Lots of vegan food places and yoga studios. I dare you not to catch the bohemian vibe. Is this bohemian? The island is gorgeous and I'll definitely recommend it. This is all the information I have for you. If I have forgotten something or if you have additional tips, please list them in the comments below so others can read and benefit from your experience. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.